Hey, what's up, AP Computer Science A? And coders from around the world. Java people, let's go. Let's do some coding bat today. It's April 8th, it's my wife's birthday. We were just kind of having some breakfast and they're outside hanging out on the porch right now. I'm gonna go ahead and code with you guys today. Um, where did we leave off? I think we did can balance last. So perhaps we go to linear in and take a look. Okay, before I get into reading this, I wanted to address some some questions that I got in my email. When am I going to start doing AP style questions and releasing AP practice soon? Okay, so we're gonna ha we're gonna have a little while to get ready for that. So how about if you can give me a l about two weeks from today, maybe even before that, um, I can have some questions ready for you to practice that are of the AP style, and then we can go over those. I want to make sure that the questions that I use are not breaking any laws by sharing them or using them. I'll probably just go to like some past questions from some past AP tests. But the tricky thing is, not all of those subjects were covered this year by our course. So what I'll have to do also is kind of just make sure that those questions are appropriate and what, you know, through the units that are going to be tested this year. So expect a full AP sort of gear up coming soon in the middle of this month, okay? Um, I know you guys are eager for that. Okay, so hold off with me and practice this with me right now. Let's do it. Given two arrays of ints sorted in increasing order. Okay, they're sorted arrays, that's nice. There's an outer and an inner. Return true if all of the numbers in inner appear in outer. So inner, inner is on the right and outer is on the left. So is it true that all of these numbers appear in here? Okay. I don't think that's too hard to understand conceptually, right? The two and the four appear in this array, so yes, we return true. The two, three, and the four don't all appear in there, so I return false. I kind of get it, right? The best solution makes only a single linear pass of both arrays, taking advantage, taking advantage of the fact that both arrays are already in sorted order. Ooh, okay, so that's cool. That's why they call it linear. So what they're telling you by linear, everybody, is that they don't want you to write a nested for loop. Nested for loops, you guys, have a runtime that is not linear. I don't want to get bogged down in that too much, but essentially here's the, the principle of the thing is, if you could avoid doing a nested loop, you should, because they're costly on time, right? Um, so how do we do this without nesting loops? Let's think of a strategy here. Pause, you try your own. Right? Pause the video, try your own solution. If you get stumped, give it a day, right? Wake up tomorrow and do it. Don't just look at the video right away. Um, really try, dig in for a while until you really are stumped and then, and then look at my solution. Um, and if you do get a solution, compare it to mine. Um, it's okay to get stuck and come back later, right? That's what's, that's what's gonna happen in your professional career if you're gonna be a programmer. You're going to get stuck and you're gonna have to come back later and maybe you'll get stuck for a long time, months. Right? And you'll have to figure something out. Okay, let's get after it here. Let's come up with a strategy. Okay, so what I would like to, like if I were doing this, um, the fact that they're sorted really helps. So maybe what I can do is keep one finger here. I can have like an index counter here, and then I can have a different one over here. So let's use the mouse and the blue. So here's what I would do. I would start at the beginning of both arrays. And then I would, I would ask the question, um, do these two numbers, uh, do they match? If they do match, then I would scoot this blue thing over to here. But if they don't, I would just scoot this one, right? Okay, then I would look again here. Does the blue number match with, my t with this where my arrow is? Yes, they do. Okay, so then I scoot this over here. There's only one number left to win the game. I'd scoot this over here and I'd say, does the number in blue match the number on the arrow? Yes, they do. Then I, then I would like that would trigger some that would trigger the end of the process right here. Once I've reached the end of this array, I'd be like, "Cool, I found them all. We won." Now, what would happen in something like this one, right? So what I would do is I'd hold my finger here and I'd go, "Does this number in blue match this number where my mouse is?" No. Okay, well, I'll scoot over here. Does this number in blue match the number where my mouse is? Yes, it does. So I'd scoot this over and say, "Now I'm looking for a three. And then I would check, check. And then I would, but if I get to the end of this array without getting to the end of this array, I lose. I return false. So it's not really a nested for loop. It's kind of like two indexes. If you notice, this one over here going through here is always moving over. This one is only moving over when its match is found. 
We can only do it this way because it's sorted. If you think about it, like if you shuffle these numbers up, it doesn't work like that, right? The fact that it's sorted super duper helps. All right, I think this strategy should work. So let's make a variable for the inner index. And let's start that at the beginning. How about zero? How about an outer index? <clears throat> Pardon me. All right, so I want to keep running this process. Um, there, are, there are two different things that could end this loop. I, I want to keep going as long as the inner index is in bounds. So in, inner index is less than inner dot length. Um, and also at the same time, I want to make sure that the outer index is less than outer dot length. So as long as I'm in bounds on both of those arrays, I want to keep checking stuff. Does that make sense? And then basically when I get out here, there's going to be, by the time this exits, one of these two things will have kicked us out of the loop. If it's the inner index that got too big, that means we found all the numbers we were looking for. But if it wasn't that, it was actually the outer index that kicked us out, then we didn't find all the numbers, right? So I could return something here where it's like, well, what got us kicked out of the loop? Is it the inner index got big or the outer index got too big? And I could return based on that, that fact. Does that make sense? All right, let's get after it. This is pretty simple, I think, actually. If the, uh, if the inner at uh, inner index, so if this number is the same as the outer at the outer index, if you remember what I did in this case, I scooted it over. The inner index went over. And in any case, I always moved this over. This was always moving, if you noticed, right? No matter what, the outer index was moving, right? So I'll just model that real quick. Like this one stayed, this one stayed until it found its match, right? I found a match with this too, so I scoot over. And then this one moves over no matter what. So the outer index always goes over. The inner index only goes over when I find a match. All right. So in one of these cases, in the successful cases, I guess, inner index will, will grow too big and it'll kick us out of the loop. So I know that down here, I want to know, I'm going to return whether or not it was, the, it was the inner index that kicked me out. I'm going to return whether or not it was the inner index that got to be too big. Which, which is inner dot length, which is like out of the in, out of the inner array, right? For example, this is a, a length of three, but its final index is two. So when it kicked us out, the index would have become three. And if that's the case and you get out, then you found all your numbers. So this would be true and I would return true, I found them all. But if I got out here because it was the outer array that I ran out of numbers, then this would be false and I would return no, I didn't find all the numbers. I think this works. And it's a linear pass. There's no nesting going on. Um, that looks pretty clean to me. I, uh, let's see if I embarrass myself on national television. No, not this time. Lots of green, and I got a big check mark. All correct. Got to feel good. And the important thing here is the kind of the um, the trick to this is is recognizing that the fact that it's sorted allows us to do this. Right now, what do you do if you don't have a sorted array? Hmm. Well, you might have to get super nifty with that. That kind of sounds like an interview question that you might hear from a professional company like a Microsoft or Amazon, where they'll try to say, can you do it without nesting a for loop? Right? Can you do it in a cleaner way? And we'd need a lot more data structures and algorithms that we have not yet learned at this level um, at this time. All right, so there's, um, there's linear in. And remember, stay tuned for those AP practice that are coming, I promise. And uh, thanks for tuning in with me today. Uh, love you guys, and happy coding. Take care, take it easy, get some sun, and read a book. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.